for some reason or another, the pulling handles is really difficult for young potters. And the getting the pressure right is pretty tricky. So one little tip I got from a friend of mine, her name's Darcy Delgado. She's up in the Bay Area, a really fantastic potter. You should look her up. Um, but we used to teach together at Idlewild Arts and in one of our pottery boot camp classes, she mentioned during a demo that pulling a handle is really similar to the same pressure as you would pet your cat's tail. And it's just one little concept that's stuck with me over the years and I continue to teach it to all my students, but it, I thought it was a really fantastic way of conceptualizing the, the correct pressure that your hand is using while you're trying to squeeze the clay. So there's a number of ways that you can teach a new potter how to pull handles. I usually do it this way where I'm teaching students how to pull individual lugs. Um, you can go the other route and have a big lug of clay and just pull multiple, like 10 to 20 handles off of one lump. And that can actually be really helpful because there's a lot of room for error there and you can always just pinch off clay if it gets too thin and continue on going. So it is a really nice way of doing it. I've just always stuck to this method of individuals because I make really small batches of pots. I only made six cups for this particular exercise. It usually is just going to come down to pressure at the end of the day and I think visualizing that pressure that you would approach petting a cat's tail is really similar to how, at least for me, how I approach pulling a handle. So another deciding factor for retaining a nice gentle curve in your handles is the timing from which you pull them to when you actually decide to shape and attach them. So for most new students, I will recommend that they pull their handles at least an hour before they intend to use them. And with this allows for is the the tack on the handle to actually go away and you can handle them a lot easier and you can shape them without putting too much fingerprints or marring um, any of the surfaces and your curve will actually stay really nice and gentle that way also you'll really have to get to know your clay body and you know, how much room for error it allows for. I'm, I'm working with a pretty finicky porcelain so I have to always teeter on the side of the clay being a little too soft and I don't really prefer that but it's just something I have to manage so you can see I'm using that rolling pin to pre-shape the interior portion of the handle so that I don't have to push so hard into the side of the cup and then risk warping it. The most important lesson I would have to suggest really is the fact that you just have to make a whole bunch and you have to mess up a whole bunch. You have to know when and when not to touch your clay and that's just something every new beginner has to learn and you know it can be really frustrating but it's really the commitment to actually improving with every effort. And I think that's the important part, is as long as you're focused on improving, eventually over time, things will start to happen. But don't forget to be kind to yourself and you know, allow, for, allow for growth to happen naturally. But um, have fun while you're working on things. And this will go back to that lesson I got from Linda Christensen, is to make a couple, put your handles on everything, and just sit back and ask yourself those questions of which one's your favorite and why and which one's your least favorite and why so for this particular batch of mugs this last mug ended up being my favorite of the bunch just the the way it was trimmed and how the foot related to the lip and the nice curve of the handle everything really seemed to do it for me so i guess it's time for me to try to make a few more of those ones